Welcome to a lesson on similar polygons. The goals of this video are to define similarity, determine corresponding parts of similar polygons, and also solve for unknown values of similar polygons. Similar polygons are polygons with the same shape, but not the same size. Here we see two similar triangles, two similar pentagons, and two similar rectangles. They're the same shape, but different size. To contrast this, here are some polygons that are not similar. These two triangles are not similar because they're not the same shape and obviously not the same size. Same thing with these two pentagons and these two rectangles. They're not the same shape, therefore they are not similar. Now let's talk about the properties of similar polygons. Well first, similar polygons must have the same number of sides and that should be pretty straightforward. There's no way a triangle is going to be similar to a rectangle pentagon, and so on. So these next two properties are key to working with similar polygons. Number two, the corresponding angles are congruent. This idea of corresponding parts is extremely important when working with similar polygons. Let's see if we can identify the corresponding angles in these two similar triangles. Notice that angle C is the angle that looks like it's close to a measure of 90 degrees, and then looking at the larger triangle, angle C would correspond with angle N. And because these two triangles are similar, these two angles are congruent or equal in measure. And we can identify that by using the same number of arcs. Now let's take a look at angle A, which is the angle formed by the shortest side and the longest side of this triangle. It would correspond to angle M in the large triangle. Notice it's formed by the shortest side and the longest side. And again, because these are corresponding angles, they are congruent. And of course, that leaves us with angle B congruent to angle O, meaning they're the same measure. Now, if we identify the corresponding angles first, it makes it a lot easier to identify the corresponding sides. And the corresponding sides of similar polygons are proportional, which means the ratio of the lengths of the corresponding sides form a proportion. Let's start by identifying the corresponding sides. Side AC corresponds to side MN. And again, the order in which we list the endpoints of these sides is important. They should be listed in corresponding order. And now that they're color coded, it makes it a lot easier. So side AB corresponds to side MO. Notice how we're going from the green vertex to the orange vertex. And then lastly, side BC corresponds to side ON. And because the corresponding sides are proportional, we can create proportions using the lengths of the corresponding sides. Remember, a proportion is when we have ratios equal to each other. So the length of side AC compared to the length of side MN must be equal to the ratio of the length of side AB to the length of side MO, which also must be equal to the ratio of the length of BC to the length of side ON. And we can use this information to solve for unknown values of similar polygons. And the last thing to mention is if we know two polygons are similar, we can use this symbol here to identify similar polygons. So in this case, triangle ABC is similar to triangle, again we need to list these vertices in corresponding order, so it would be MNO. Now let's take a look at some examples of how we can use this information. Here's a problem where we're given two rectangles and we're asked to identify if they're similar. So we need to check two things. We need to make sure the corresponding angles are congruent and corresponding sides are proportional. Well first, if we know they're both rectangles, all the angles would be 90 degrees and therefore congruent. So now we're left to check to see if corresponding sides are proportional. And again, we know that opposite sides of rectangles are the same length, so this would be 15 and this would be 10 this would be 12 and this would be 20. So to check to see if these two rectangles are similar, we need to check that 
the corresponding sides are proportional. And since this side corresponds to this side, and this side corresponds to this side, we can write a proportion using these lengths. So the ratio of 10 to 12 must be equal to the ratio of 15 to 20 if these are similar. Now notice how the ratio here was comparing, notice how this first ratio is comparing lengths in the small rectangle to the large rectangle, and we need to be consistent. Notice how the second ratio is also comparing a length in the small rectangle to the large rectangle. So if these two rectangles are similar, this would be a proportion, which means the cross products would be equal. So what you need to check is 10 times 20 equal to 12 times 15. Well, 10 times 20 is 200, and 12 times 15 is equal to 180. Well, those obviously aren't equal, therefore these two rectangles are not similar. If they were similar, these would have been equal. Let's take a look at one more example. Here we're given that these two triangles are similar, and we want to solve the two triangles, which means we want to find the length of all of the sides and the measure of all of the angles. Again, let's start by identifying the corresponding angles. Angle C would be the smallest angle in the triangle, so angle C must correspond to angle Z. Angle B is the angle opposite the longest side, so angle B corresponds to angle Y, and that leaves us with angle A corresponding to angle X. And we know that corresponding angles are congruent. So let's start with determining the measure of the three angles. If angle Y is 83 degrees, so is angle B, and if angle C is 41 degrees, Angle Z must also be 41 degrees. Notice how we're left with one remaining angle in each triangle, but remember the sum of these three angles must be 180 degrees. So to determine the measure of angle A and the measure of angle X, we can take 180 degrees and then subtract the sum of 83 degrees and 41 degrees. So that gives us a measure of 56 degrees for both the measure of angle A and the measure of angle X. And to determine the length of the missing sides, we know the corresponding sides must be proportional. Notice how side AC corresponds to side XZ. So we'll use the ratio of 12 to 18 to get started. So 12 to 18 must be equal to the ratio of the length of BC to the length of YZ. So we'll have 10 over the length of YZ. Since we only have one unknown, we can cross multiply and solve for the length of YZ. Not to get confused by having the length expressed as two variables here, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. I'll call this length here M and this length here N. So we'll delete this and replace it with M. Now we can cross multiply, 12 times m would be 12m must equal 18 times 10, that's 180, divide by 12, that's going to give us 15. So the length of yz is 15 units. And now we're left to determine the length of side ab, which we'll just call n. So let's go ahead and use the same ratio of 12 to 18, notice how this compares a length in the small rectangle to the large rectangle. So 12 to 18 must equal the ratio of N, which is the length of side AB, to the length of side XY, so N to 12. And now we cross multiply. 18 times N, or 18N, must equal 12 times 12, that's 144. Divide by 18, n is equal to, n is equal to 8, therefore the length of AB is equal to 8. And this is how we can use the properties of similar polygons to determine unknown values. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching.